welcome to this call today. Uh, today we have uh, an interesting guest. Uh, his name is Shane. Uh, he's from the Porter Network. I think today we sort of uh, will be discussing um, an interesting project. And at the same time, I'm also just excited about you know, the possibilities of, of uh, blockchain technology and what they can do. And I think Porter Network brings this new innovation. Uh, it's bringing in, you know, a, a new approach, if I might say, but I think Shane is in a better position to sort of explain what, you know, he's been working on, on the Porter Network. Uh, Shane, welcome. How are you doing? Hi, David. Thank you for having me. Hi, hello to the whole uh, Big KE community. And thank you for having me here. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Thank you again, once again, Shane, for joining us. Um, I think we we always start this discussion by some by someone introducing themselves and, you know, uh, tell us what you do. First of all, where you're based, you're clearly not from Kenya. So maybe you can, uh, yeah, uh, kick this off. So my name is Shane Benjamin. I'm the CEO of Porta. Um, we're based here in the UK, but the team is distributed for now, semi-distributed. We have like two members in the UK and we have one member in Kenya and another member in Iran. So Yvonne is a Kenyan member who introduced me to you all. So shout out to Yvonne. Um, me, I'm personally from the French Caribbean. So I moved to the UK to work in a blockchain space and then ended up starting my own company in that space which is Porta Network. <laughs> I think uh, we can just get started with, uh, with the introduction of uh, Porta. You can just take us through uh, what you've been building, uh, maybe the inspiration also behind it. And then as we continue, we'll possibly uh, take questions after the discussion. Again, I would just like to add if you have any questions uh, ab about Porta, about blockchain, about cryptocurrencies, I'm sure Shane will be more than happy to answer. Definitely. But uh, yeah, to, to get started, I think, Shane, why don't you just uh, take us through the Porter Network? Definitely. So I'm going to share a PowerPoint that I prepared for this um, for this call so we can have a better understanding and have a bit of a trail to share with you all. So at Porter, we're building, as, as it says here, we're trying to build a blockchain for the masses, right? So we're looking for growth for mass adoption of Web3 and decentralized space. And Porta Network is a layer one blockchain, which I'm gonna go into in a bit more detail as I move through the slides. But just so they can get a better understanding, it's a project we've been working on since about May. And as of right now, we've launched our testnet and we're still in development moving towards trying to find a better way to get everyone into that space and into the blockchain area as well. So to make it more interesting to be on the decentralized web than it is to be on the centralized web. And that's where we're working on a um, we've ad identified a few problems as well in the decentralized space, which is what we're trying to address and we're working hard to address at the Porta, at Porta Network. So here are a few problems that we've come across. If you're new to blockchain, if you're moving from any web to centralized platform, there's an extremely high learning curve when you try to move over to the blockchain space. For example, if you go to Facebook, Google, it's pretty simple. You arrive on a website, you type something in. What if you want, whatever you want to expect to happen, happens. But it's not the same when it comes to the decentralized space. In a blockchain space, you have to add a wallet, you have to understand tokenomics, you have to understand what a token is, who uses it, which token works for what platform, which blockchain you should even choose, whether you should go with Ethereum or Tron, or for people that are looking at the hype Solano right now, or should you wait until ADA finally launch, Cardano finally launches something? So there's a lot of choices and a lot of different things to learn because each one of these platforms has their own wallets, their own ecosystem, their own products, which can sometimes become very difficult to work with. Another issue we've, we've addressed or we found is that user experience is very complicated. So due to the high learning curve, due to the user experience is a high learning curve as well. So for people at the best documented projects or the best documented platforms would be the Ethereum platform or the Binance Smart Chain platform simply because it's also a copy of Ethereum. So you would have to get MetaMask, you'd have to get these tokens and then start tokens or coins and then start working on the ecosystem. But the user experience tends to become pretty complicated at that point. Because once you get to the page, then you have to click on something, open a wallet, create that wallet, execute a transaction to make something happen, which is not always the best experience for users most of the times a very difficult experience, especially for new users of the blockchain space. And so that's 
one of the reasons why we have low adoption. And then you have structure. So if you're a developer coming over from the centralized space and trying to build on a blockchain space, it is very difficult because there's a whole new concept around how to actually build on the blockchain and how that works and understanding conceptually and technically how you would build that. And then once you finally understand that, then actually building, there's no platform, there's no structure, there's no order for you to go about developing these things. You kind of have to figure it out yourself, put things together. So there, there are no standards to building on a blockchain or any blockchain because each one is also different. Just another way of showing how we're in a wild, wild west of the blockchain of that whole space right now. So due to these factors, we have low adoption on a blockchain space. So as of 2021, January 2021, there are approximately 106 million people on using blockchain products or crypto products globally, which sounds like a big number if you're like speaking about a country, but to say globally, we're about just under 8 billion people on the planet right now. And so as you understand, it's a very low number, especially since we're trying to, especially since Web2 is becoming obsolete or dangerous in some way. We have a, a few companies centralizing all of our data and the blockchain will help us to spread that out and be able to be more safe and so on. Our solution to this is to create a new layer one blockchain. The Our vision primarily at, uh, not a primarily, our vision at Porta is to create a world where everyone has access to the privacy, security and opportunities built with Web3. So the privacy is that everything that you would have on your web through would be secured and semi-anonymous if you choose to create a profile, but it's anonymous by default. It'll be secure because it's encrypted. Most of the information, except certain information stored directly within smart contracts and clear, but everything else you do is encrypted in some way, shape or form. And then also the opportunities that come with being on a blockchain. So if you're, for example, if you're at a bank and you put a thousand dollars into your bank account. That thousand dollars will just sit there, in spite of the fact that it's not actually sitting there. Your bank will come in and use it, make a loan, and then you get back probably zero point one percent interest. Whereas in a blockchain space, you take a same one thousand dollars, you put it into a lending pool, and you get four percent interest. For example, on a lower end, that's some of the opportunities that you get from the blockchain space that you won't or can't get from the centralized space that's just one part if you look at social media for example they use a lot of your data to sell to those companies and you get no compensation in the blockchain space you would have to request your information in order to exchange it with the business and then you get compensated wherever your data is used so these are just a few of the advantages that come from that space and it can be expanded and extrapolated across all the different mediums on the on the centralized moving to the decentralized area. So our mission is to make blockchain products accessible to everyone through great user experience and seamless software. We believe that the software and the experience is what's gonna make people move from web two over to web three. We're saying this because Porta is working on the design. What or When we say design, we don't just mean the, the way your product looks or the application looks. We're actually talking about from the ground up how you're going to use each and every product or how you're going to use that platform. That's what we're focusing on. And our mission is to do is to bring that proper design through software. And once you have that software working seamlessly, then it's easier for people to keep coming back and to get invested and encrusted into that ecosystem, which is what we need to do if we want to accelerate that adoption or like past that 106 million over to 200, 300, 1 billion people. That's the design is what's going to make people come back to that. Another thing is basically lowering the barrier to entry, making all of those complicated things very simple by once again, design, but also by education. So well-structured documentation and deep dives for developers is what we're going to focus on for getting developers to come in to then create better design and to also give them a platform and a structure to use to start that design on. So that, that is basically the package and our founding blocks for what we're doing at Porta. This is, what's going to, this is what we believe is going to be the initial catalyst to help people get more into blockchain. And then what that'll do is allow everyone to craft, craft their community, craft, craft their ecosystem. These are the different things that are going to get everyone pulled into Web3 and moving away from Web2 and these 
fully centralized control platforms and products. And just, just so everyone knows, for the more technical people, we're building our platform on Substrate, which is built by Polkadot. And it's a framework that's used to build blockchains. For people I know what frameworks are like React, React Native, Angular, and so on. Well, Polkadot has built a similar framework called Substrate, and they have packages that they call Palettes, which are built using Frame. And this is what allows us to build out new blockchain products and blockchain platforms much quicker than if we had to build it from the ground up, like something like Ethereum or Ethereum or Solana or Cardano, which take very long to get to production. Thanks to Porta, thanks to, sorry, Polkadot and Substrate, we're able to do that much quickly, much more quickly than if we had to build it up for ourselves. Our services. So the way we see it is that our entry point, the, ent the key entry point for most people coming over to the blockchain space is to have a wallet. You can't do anything on a blockchain without a wallet. So that's why Porta, we opted to create our own wallet and focusing on making it easy for you to interact with each and every application that's associated with a Porta ecosystem. We haven't rolled out that wallet just yet, but we have rolled out our testnet of the Porta network, which you can also develop smart contracts. And just to segue into it for the more developer focused people, I'm just going to show you how to, um, not technically, but deploy a smart contract and how to create an asset in our documentation. And then you can go ahead and then if you actually want to try it out, you can go to our testnet and be able to test it out yourself. So I'm just going to open that right now and share that with you. So here's the portal documentation. You can find everything at docs.portalnetwork. And then you can see right here, there's a whole bunch of different things you can look at. If you're just getting started, you can go ahead and figure out the different things that you want to touch on. So connecting to Porta or requesting funds, minting a token for the people that want to create their own, their own currency, their own cryptocurrency. For those that know ERC20 tokens, thanks to, thanks to Polkadot, we have a palette that's what, that's integrated into the Porta, into the Porta network which makes it super simple to create your own token. So you would just go over to Porta Network and get a few tokens and create a wallet first. You can find a tutorial on creating a wallet up here, I believe. Yeah. But for just minting your own token, you can go ahead, go to the Explorer, head to Network, have a look at the assets, and then just as simple as creating your own asset right here. You, this is your user. You give your address, whatever your product address is. You determine the number of tokens you want to issue, the minimum balance each person has to have, and then you can go ahead and issue those tokens. So yeah, this is a more detailed one. That was just a quick, a quick overview. This is your more detailed explanation how to create that. So you go ahead, create an asset, simply choose create. You set the number of decimals you want, the balance, the minimum balance each person has to have, and then create your asset. You give it a name, issue the account you're going to issue it with. And that's it. Now you have your own cryptocurrency ready to use. And then you can go ahead and distribute it using the mint, mint your own token, and then give it, give it to people, sell it to people and mint it all to a wallet and then charge someone to buy it from you. But as pretty, that's simple as that. You can create a wallet in under five minutes if you know exactly what you're doing. And if you don't know and you're just trying to figure it out, it'll probably take you 10 to 15 minutes. And it'll be a lot cheaper than creating an ERC-20 token on Ethereum, which is probably about $1,000 at this point. And smart contracts. So also, if you're a developer and you want to start working on smart contracts, we use Ink, which is also developed by, by Polkadot, and it's integrated into the substrate system as opposed to Solidity. So people that already know how to use Rust, the advantage, let me just go over the advantages to using Ink or Rust as opposed to Solidity, is that Ink is already a fully built up, not Ink, sorry, Solidity. Rust is already a fully built out solution, a fully built out platform that's built by Mozilla, who also created Firefox. And it's it has a huge community, has everything that you already need um, in a programming language as opposed to Solidity. I don't know for the people that have used Solidity, you'll notice there's a lot of stuff that are still in development, a lot of things that are missing in terms of what you can actually do with Solidity. The advantage to using Rust is that you get to, you just have the whole blockchain built out in one language and you also have the smart contracts built out in the same language. It allows us to optimize the blockchain and optimize the smart contracts to run seamlessly and to run more efficiently 
on the blockchain than it would be to run Solidity, which has to set up a whole new EVM compiler, which was which translates that coding language into something the blockchain can actually read and execute. It tends to create bigger binaries, execution tends to be slower, and there are more vulnerabilities into the language seen as how there's a huge contrast between the blockchain itself, the language, and then running it. So those separate layers start to create, can create different different. So if you look at projects like, if you've noticed there have been a lot of hacks on platforms like Binance Smart Chain that use Solidity as their as a primary language, is because there are a lot of it leave this structure leaves a lot of space for attack and a lot of separation. And I'm gonna say it's still a good language because most most projects on Ethereum are bu built in Solidity. I would say it's probably more a developer issue where that is concerned. But for people that are coming over from one language to the next, if you're going to just be a blockchain developer, uh, a smart contract developer, then Solidity is the right way to go. But if you actually want to build out blockchain, build out a blockchain and then also build on it, then you probably Rust is going to be the best direction to take. And a lot of other projects are currently taking that direction as well. So Solana is um, also a fully Rust based solution. Erling is a fully Rust-based solution. Polkadot is a fully Rust-based solution. So if you're trying to hit the puck where it's going, I think Rust would be the best direction to take on that. If you want to get into the space now and you want to focus on the, the big thing that's happening right now, then Solidity would be the best place to start when it comes to blockchain. But we're, we're trying to hit it where it's going, so we're going to continue with Rust in the future. So this is a simple way how to set up and deploy a smart contract. It's a bit more technical and it's going to take a bit of time to go over on how to set up a full full fledged smart contract so if anyone's interested i would suggest you go over to our documentation you can get um testnet tokens over on the portal network at faucet.portal network and then you can go over to console or download download this documentation here and test out how to build a smart contract on a portal network yeah, so our traction so far at Porta, we've launched our testnet on August, which has been doing great so far. We have on our Twitter, we have about 16,000 followers. On Telegram, we have just over like 14 and a half followers, um, members in Telegram and Discord. If you're a developer and you're actually interested in building on Porta once again, Discord would be the place to ask all your questions. This is primary developer focused. Other people can come and join and try and see, try and understand what's actually happening on the technical side. But the focus is for developers to be able to come and ask their technical questions and get responses. We have a developer in there that responds to your questions and chats with you and tries to figure out what you need there. So if you have questions, the community is also growing very well on that, on that side. So a community member might be able to answer your question as well. So just head over to Discord if you want to jump in there. The products we're building at Porta we're starting off with a non-fungible token, NFT marketplace. The reason we're starting there is because we believe that that's a great and easy barrier to entry for most people to understand. Most people understand what an NFT is and they understand how to use it, how to acquire it and so on, because the idea is pretty similar to a trading card or to any other type of asset, right? Whereas decentralized financial products, we're going to move into later on into our development process simply because it requires a number of different aspects to be in place so for lending and for lending you'd need uh you need uh, an oracle to be able to put something like that in place a decentralized exchange is probably more interesting to a lot of people because as products build out you're going to need to exchange um, from one token to the next token so that's going to be our second focus and then crypto lending will come later on uh, non-fungible on uh, NFT marketplace, our beta should be out sometime later in Q4. So people will be able to test that out and see if they're interested and also give us feedback. We have a beta team, um, a beta program and a super fans program as well. So those people and part of those programs would also be able to test that earlier on. So if you're interested, join our Telegram and ask about that. And then our community managers or marketing manager, someone will be able to guide you and direct you on how to sign up for one of those platforms. And we'd be happy to have you honestly in our community. If we look at the crypto market, it's gonna expand. So all the people that are still on the fence on whether they want to get involved into crypto or not, I would suggest you get involved now because the best time to get involved would have been 2009. 
the second best time is now and too late is going to be tomorrow definitely because the space is growing so rapidly um we've estimated that between statista has estimated that between 2020 and 2025 the whole space is going to go grow by above 13 percent um 13 x growing from 3 billion to 39 billion and this is just like with numbers coming out of uh, north america and asia pacific so that has in the whole african continent we didn't even take that into account when we were looking at the, when they were looking at these numbers so anyone that's getting involved in the space right now is definitely still an early adopter and that they're going to benefit from the space in the next five years to come about the chain for the more technical people we're focused again on just being agnostic so we want to allow you to have any type of platform any type of product running on a blockchain so we're trying to optimize for those different all of these different spaces while still trying to avoid the complexities that come with hosting all of these different platforms so if you look at ethereum for example they try to run every single type of products and every single type of plat um, on their platform and so the issues that this causes is if you you end up with issues like with the crypto kitty the crypto kitty problem that they had two years back everyone was trying to sell their crypto kitties at the same time which forced up the price of ethereum and also congested the network making transactions extremely expensive which is something that still happens today. If you look at the price of Ethereum, it's incredibly high and the gas fees are also high. So what we're focusing on is trying to find a way to make that cheap, also trying to find a way to make the uh, make interaction with the blockchain quicker, because as of right now, we can have approximately 1,500 transactions per second um, and with six second blocks. So if you just do six multiplied by 1,500, and that's the number of transactions we can get within a block. Ethereum right now, they can execute about 12 transactions per, per second. So you can see the difference where that is concerned. And we're working on making it a lot easier. So our smart contracts, again, is Inc, which we spoke about earlier and why we're using Inc as opposed to Solidity or other platforms. So we're just, at this point, we're just trying to build out the most effective and efficient platform for all sectors um, on the blockchain in a blockchain space. Our milestones to date and our direction. So we had our IDO, hired team members and added and were listed on two exchanges in Q2. Q3, we had our validator program. We're speaking with Hobie. We just added them to our validator partners. And we're also um, launched our test net during that time. So then those that are joining now, you're going to be right at the cusp of what we're going to be doing with our staking platform going to be launched in Q4. We're targeting a few more exchange listings and our NFT marketplace. You'll be able to test that out on our test net and then getting ready to move into um, mainnet and exchange listings and then conversion events. So for those people that are not following or that are new to the project, our conversion event is seen as how we have our token right now, which is Cayenne, because we rebranded earlier on in the year, earlier, earlier in the year, yeah. And we need to convert that token from Cayenne over to the Porter, over to the Porter coin. So that's going to be happening in 2022. We're targeting Q1 2022. And then for everyone else that's want to get that wants to get in later on in our project, uh, we're going to be having our grant fund. We're targeting 2023, but we're hoping to get that done much earlier, hopefully Q2 to Q3 2022 for developers that want to come in and join our platform. And then we're going to move a lot of our focus over to DeFi platforms and our developer programs to build out the Porter ecosystem. Here's the team. You have, so there's me, Emmanuel is our head of marketing. So anything that comes out um that's articles and so on emmanuel is a guy that's gonna help you out with that and if you need to connect with anyone about any marketing proposals you can also reach out to emmanuel i didn't add their emails here but it's pretty simple you take our first name you do add portal network and you're in contact with each member of the team cmac is the one that does everything that's beautiful on our platform <laughs> he's the one that has that did the branding and the design for each of our products and our platforms then you have yvonne who's our community manager and Robert, he's the one that's doing everything that's related to development and making that work out um, well. So thank you to everyone for listening for, to the presentation. And you can have a look at our website, which would be porta.network. And then for all of the developers, documentation is at docs.porta.network. And for me, if you want to connect with me, you can always reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at, at I am Shane Ben on Twitter. Yeah. 
And I think we're going to open up to any questions. I'll pass it back to David. All right, great. Uh, yeah, thanks, Sean. I think that was quite detailed. That was quite deep. I love some, some uh, quite a number of things that you guys are doing there. So thank you. Um, I think for me personally, I love the fact that uh, you guys are also building on Polkadot. I think, I think with what Polkadot has been able to do um, with, the sub, with substrates, so I think that would be um i mean i mean i mean it's uh, getting quite a lot of traction so i see quite a number of questions here so i think i'll just go straight to the questions and then uh we'll see how many we can answer before time's up so um, I'll, I'll i'll start with this question shane uh so someone is asking about your gas fees you know gas so fees yeah so can you maybe talk about that so uh victor is asking how are the transaction fees looking like currently on the portal network and do you have any plans to migrate to l2 solutions to minimize on the same so we oh. don't we don't want to have to build in any layer two solutions in the future so just start with that we really want to create the blockchain in such a way that you don't need one so if you look at projects like solana solana they don't need a layer two solution because they can execute about fifty thousand transactions per second at a reasonable cost we're looking into that um, as Solana Solana continues to grow and the price appreciates, that'll probably have to change and it'll become more expensive. But we do have some ideas around that. We're looking to potentially put in place a stable coin if possible, but this is just some still internal ideas. But if you look at the test net, as of right now, it costs approximately a hundred quarter to execute a transaction. And the reason for that is that we just set some minimums. It's still test net. So we still testing out stuff and clearing things out what that would reflect at a fiat spot value usd spot value is unclear at the moment seeing as how we haven't listed our portal token just yet so that's something we're gonna have to see in mainnet and then if that's the case we will adjust the price to make it more affordable for everyone yeah uh still on gas fees i ben is asking uh what do, what would be used to pay for the gas fees uh that would be the portal coin so it'd be similar similar idea to ethereum or anything else um the person that validates your block the validates the block that has your transaction they will receive um porta to porta coin in exchange for that uh, habib is asking when are you transitioning to the porta token and why choose the kian token instead <laughs> so um we're transitioning from porta our goal is to have that done by q1 2022 um, why we're transitioning from Kayan is because we want to, so Kayan token is right now on the Binance Smart Chain Network. So if we want to be able to use Porta, we want to move our focus over there. We want to be able to have our separate blockchain and just have that used. So that's why we're going to have the transition. It needs to happen or else people, people just keep buying Kayan. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what Chiz is asking, since Porta is an L1 protocol, what mm -hmm. measures is the dev team taking to ensure Porta runs on L2 as its rivals? I think you touched on that, but Porta is an L1 pro Porta is an L1 protocol. Yes, uh, we're not actually taking any measures to work with anyone at this point, but we have been speaking to a few other projects, but these are a bit different. So projects that are probably coming and integrate with Porta as opposed to um, building as opposed to building a layer two solution. So like Oracle's um lending platforms we want them to come over and build over at portal so if you mean like bridges and so on over to different platforms that's not in place just yet but we we could potentially look into bridging to similar products so products like akala or some of these other substrate based blockchains that could potentially partner with habib is asking who are your auditors so in terms of if you mean smart contract auditors we have spoken to a few different people, but since Inc is a pretty new language and we're not building Solidity, there's no auditors for us just yet. Help us get to a crazy number of ecosystem builders and believe me, auditors will show up to help us with the auditing system. But as of right now, there, there are no auditors that exist for the Inc, for the Inc smart contract platform. Uh, Victor is asking, how does Porter Network intend to make its NFT marketplace outstanding, bearing in mind that there's stiff competition from big rivals such as OpenSea and Rari. <laughs> 100%. I wish Emmanuel was here to answer that question. But what we're, once again, at Porta, what we focus on is design, right? 
So our goal is to make it so easy and so cheap for you to interact with the Porter blockchain that you, you don't even want to go to anywhere else, right? And this comes back to our whole idea of full integration across all the products, right? We want to make Porter, the Porter blockchain so easy and so cheap for you to buy and mint your NFTs. Also, we want to create a way for you to have your NFTs directly integrated with your wallet as opposed to having to go to a different platform. And then we want it that when you go to that platform, you're scrolling through and you're looking for new things that we probably potentially have an algorithm that just goes through um, all of your past interests, things that you've liked, similar to the way Facebook and so on, they do their algorithms around posts. We want to have something like that integrated into the into our marketplace as well that just makes it easy and interesting and just you always see fresh things and things that you're actually interested in. So we have a lot of ideas around that. But the key points is that it's fast, it's cheap, and it's easy to use. That's what we're going to do to for the initial part. And then we're going to just work on those tiny details around it to make people want to keep using it more. Right. Uh, Mula Mula is asking, do you have a favorite wallet to use with Kian? <laughs> well, our favorite wallet to, for Kian, oh, actually, I just use MetaMask personally. But if you're going to ask about a favorite wallet that you're going to use with Porter, I would suggest using a Porter wallet once that comes out. I think that would definitely be your favorite wallet for the Porter platform. <laughs> Evans is asking, it's a bit technical, but maybe you can see how to answer this. There are three core issues prevalent in a blockchain project, security, interoperability, and scalability. Mm -hmm. How does the Porter network overcome these issues? Yes. So security, that's that's built in from the ground up. We're using, as we said, we're using um solid substrate to build out the to build out the platform. But in ourselves, we're working on our own types of security around that. Like what are the different things we can add, making it making it easier to make sure that we're we're trying to make it easy while being secure, right? So multi-sig wallets by default built into the platform, for example, is one of the measures that we're taking to address people's funds. We're also looking to integrate a DAO as well for when certain executions on a trans when certain transactions need to be executed on a platform. And this is just from the currency perspective. And the blockchain itself, we're building it from the, we're using their stuff, but then we're reviewing all the code to make sure that that is secure on that side. Scalability is, yeah, we're stress testing the platform. That's why we had our validator program launch so that we can see how big can we make the network and how what happens when it gets bigger. So we're stress testing that to make sure that it would be able to handle a large amount of stress, all the different servers and so on. So these are just a few other measures that we're taking on the financial side. So for your crypto assets, along with the, the actual blockchain structure itself. So these are just a few other things. There are a whole bunch of other stuff that we're taking into account as well, but which probably a bit too much detail to go into right now. Yeah, you talked about a DAO? Yes, yes, we do have a DAO um, in the works. I'm not going to go into too much detail before I end up making promises that we don't plan to deliver. But we, we do have ideas about putting place in that, putting up DAO in place for the Porter blockchain. Yeah, we look forward to that. Um, Mula Mula is asking, can you shed light on Padlock? Yes, definitely. So Padlock is our testnet. Padlock, we we launched Padlock on uh, in August. And the idea around Padlock was just be able to see how the testnet would respond to um, real world, real world use as opposed to a controlled environment. We just let it out there in a while and to see what happened. And so it's just it's just our testnet. It's gonna look our main net is gonna look pretty similar to what Padlock looks like right now. So when you finally launch, it's gonna look a lot like that. That's just basically what it is. Isok is asking, what will be the actual circulating supply of Porter coin after launching the Porter network mainnet? That is an excellent question. We're also having that question go around our community right now. So we're most likely gonna do a split. How much that split is gonna be is still in discussion. We had we asked the question internally and we asked the question to a, for our beta fans. Some people are suggesting a one to one, a one to ten, a one to one hundred. We will let out more. We will confirm that closer to the date, so we don't have anyone expecting a certain number, and then we have to go with a different one. So yeah. Dennis is asking when it comes to tokenomics, don't you think the liquidity is a bit less compared to amounts taked for team and rewards? Uh, would it be an issue? Um, no, I don't think so because more than fifty percent actually goes out. Um, so no, I don't, I don't see how that would be an issue to be honest. Uh, Ben is asking what would be, what would the PR, APR for staking look like? 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's um if you left it up to the community, the APR would be somewhere around 10 million or 10,000 or something like that. Um we're trying to be fair, we will be generous definitely in our first staking campaign. Um what that number is exactly, once again, I don't want to make promises that we won't be able to keep, but it will be generous. Let's just let's just say that. Uh the next question was about the DAO model. I think you answered that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some so, yeah, someone was asking if you're moving toward the DAO governance model. I think you say that you are thinking about that. Yeah, we're taking this into consideration. We're looking at how that could be structured and what they would be able to govern over within the platform. But that's we still have a long way to go before we put in place the DAO. So we'll probably let out more information as we get closer to being able to deliver that. Uh, Victor is asking, from your study or research, what is the state of blockchain adoption for the masses in Africa and globally? Uh, excellent question. Um, there's not a lot of information around Africa that, ha- that I have found. Maybe there is. I just haven't found much. But globally, um, we're primarily the focus. Once again, we, uh, I mentioned it in the slides, is that a lot of it is coming from the U.S. and definitely Asia. In spite of um, a lot of pushback, Asia, the Asian adoption of crypto is growing heavily. And also now there's starting to be pushed back in the U.S. where it's still growing. 23% is coming from North, North America. Just Canada, America, 23% of all adoption is coming from there. And then I would say probably around the same or slightly more is coming from um, China. So I would think Asia as a whole, Asia, South Asia, Asia Pacific, everything. And so I would say Africa, if I just had to go based on um, just looking at the chart, I would say Africa should be somewhere around between five to 10%. But then you have also getting pushed back in countries like Nigeria um, and Ghana is adopting pretty well. Kenya seems to be adopting pretty well. And Kenya, I think is advanced on a whole when it comes to um, decentralized, not decentralized finance, but um, FinTech. Um, I believe you guys have had BitPeso, for example, for like years. They brought that to the UK and everyone was just like, oh, wow, we have mobile payments. And then you look at (laughs) you guys in Kenya and it's like you had this for about, what, just under 10 years. So um, I would say if there's any adoption, countries in Africa that are doing the most are probably South, South, um, South Africa, Ghana, Kenya. And I think I think Nigeria as well, they're trying to, but the government is against that. And maybe Rwanda seems to be one of the more places that are, have strong adoption. So I would say five to ten percent globally compared to compared to the whole global view. Yeah. Yeah. So Ben is asking uh, concerning moving with the trend, most eco- most ecosystems are moving toward the metaverse and USM. Does Porta mm-hmm. have any plans on moving with such trends? You know, to be honest, I would love to. But if you understand the complexity of putting in place a metaverse um, development wise, we're going to we, we I would personally love to get into that space. But I, I would have to say that that's probably far, far down the line. Um, Axie is a great example of that, um, but they still took about three years just to get to beta. So, yeah, that's when we when we're ready to make a commitment, we'll jump off that bridge once we get there. <laughs> All right. Habib is asking, do you have an ambassador program? Um, not just yet. We are talking about it internally on what that would look like. We haven't a lot of discussions internally, but we need to get to mainnet first before we can put a lot of these things in place. But if you're interested in having a conversation, we're open to we're open to figuring out what people actually want as a part of an ambassador program. So if you want to propose something, we'll be happy to do that. Uh, happy to receive your proposal. So just join the Telegram um reach out to you can just ask the question Yvonne or Emmanuel will most likely answer it and we would love to get your feedback on what you would like um as a part of an ambassador program yeah I know I, I noticed you guys also have a grant program as well yes we are running a grant program for developers so if any developers wants to come in and build on a platform you can go ahead jump into telegram we I think we've closed we've closed applications for now but we're always open to hearing people drop some interesting stuff. So you can reach out to us directly. We'll have a look at your pitch, um, everything as well. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking of developers, Ben is asking, uh, would Porta have an academy like Binance Academy for crypto, but in Porta case for developing on the Porta network? Because that would really be interesting. Yes, definitely. We want to do that. We really want. So once again, that comes back to the ease of use, right? We want to make it so easy for people to get inside and to get into the platform. 
Um, this will probably this is something we want to put in place once we have more capital. So as soon as the platform launches and we can move our focus to something else, we will be putting in place an educational an educational platform. We're actually working on some content right now as well for like basic basic usage. So yeah, we will be putting something like that in place. Victor is asking, how do you see the future of Web3 looking like? Uh, and are you planning on launching? Okay, yeah, he was asking, but yeah, how do you see the future of Web3 looking like? Yeah, so the way I see the future of Web3 is literally that you're gonna have a chain for everything, right? Um, right now we're trying to run this solution where everyone is kind of trying to do the same thing but i believe we're going to have a few winners and then they're going to take a separate a different approach where they start specializing for the needs so similar to centralized centralized platforms where you have facebook that built out their whole solution specifically to run facebook and to run social platforms i believe the decentralized web will start taking that direction as well and then we're going to have less, we're not going to have as much tokens as we currently have. I think a lot of people are going to start integrating the primary token of the platform and just for efficiency, or they're going to have a separate type of structure where if you mint your own token, then you'll be able to use that token as gas on that platform. So um, I believe Substrate has already put something like that in place. So if you use, if you create an asset using the asset palette right now, you can potentially use your token. So for example, you mint a BitKE token. You could use that to pay for your gas on a specific platform. I'm not saying we're integrating this with Porta, but this is what, what can possibly happen. Instead of using Porta coin to pay someone for executing a transaction for BitKE, you can pay that person a BitKE token instead so i think that these are the different types of things that are going to start happening in the space so you're going to have specialized chains along with um any anyone can pay their gas and whatever they want to pay so it's, it will be the equivalent of me and you coming to an agreement that i won't pay you in dollars i'll pay you in euros but on the same platform someone else can pay in like pounds and so on and i think that's what the ecosystem is the ecosystem is going to start to silo itself out into specific industries that's what i really think is going to happen in the future all right. How 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 big do you see solutions like sub substrate like growing? I think substrate substrate is gonna grow incredibly and it's gonna spread out into these different spaces, right? So then it's not gonna just be a private, so it's not gonna just be a public blockchain solution. I think you're gonna see whole companies transform themselves to build on solutions like this. So for example, instead of you're probably going to have database companies like Mongo or something that's going to come out with their own IPFS um, solution as opposed to running Mongo. And they're going to take, they can take something like Substrate, switch it out, adjust their whole um, database system and build on that. And then they'll open that up to the whole public. So you have like Mongo, Substrate, DB, where you have all of your information like completely decentralized. Or you're going to see other projects or companies like um, Google, instead of storing all of your information in a single place, you're going to have that fully encrypted and, dis and distributed. And then they're going to every, I believe that is substrate, the structure they've taken is going to be the basis for a huge transformation across all industries, because people are looking for ways to get onto the decentralized web. And because we all know that decentralization is a future centralization, 20 years is, is probably, if it's still existing, it's going to look substantially different. So substrate just set the, set the ground for all these transformations are going to happen and then of course they're going to continue to be public solutions but they're going to be a lot more um semi-centralized or company solutions are going to be built on that and how do you see these um you know these uh the growth of l2 solutions i, I mean they're coming up uh right <laughs> left and center i mean how far uh, can we take this l2 solutions i think are going to be interesting in the sense of cross-chain engagement so um, right now we're like focusing on L2 simply for like making transactions faster on Bitcoin or making Ethereum transactions gasless and so on. But I think what's gonna happen in the future is that once you have all of these independent chains running, bridges, layer two solutions are gonna kind of work with bridges in some way, right? That's gonna make it faster for you to, instead of you having to go through an exchange. So if you wanna get from Ethereum over to Binance, you have to go through an exchange. 
and then convert your Ethereum to um, BNB and then go ahead and do your stuff on BNB. I think what layer two is going to start happening is that you're going to take your Ethereum, you're going to go across a bridge and have a layer two instantly convert your tokens and execute a transaction in the BNB network in probably like less than a second. I, I think that's the direction we're going to end up going in some type of cross bridge um, layer two solution. But that's we'll see how that goes. I think that will be the best way to go about it in the future. Wow, that would be interesting to have. I mean, doing a transaction cross chain. Cross chain, yeah. yeah. I think that that's that would be, and then you have a transaction cross chain that happened in like less than a second, right? Yeah. That would be the most efficient way to go about it. I, uh, so what Chase is asking, Mulama is asking. I don't know if we can do this. Uh, can you demonstrate how to set up a Porter Kianite on MetaMask? That's pretty simple, actually. Um, you just actually if you if you already have metamask you're already on a bnb chain um i don't have any wallets all of my wallets already have can kind of set up to it and i um, can't show your wallet right now uh you just go over to coin gecko you copy your address you add a new token and then you just add and then it'll just add your can to the metamask to metamask so i think we're also in trust wallet as well but i i don't personally use trust wallet i wouldn't i'm not suggesting it either i just know this is a pretty well used platform so yeah, MetaMask is easy. Take the address, paste it in. You're good. Uh, what is is asking, does the Kian token go through the burning process or what is the future for the value of the Porter token? Uh, go through which process? Uh, burning. Burning? Yeah, do you burn the tokens? Ah, if you burn the token. No, we don't burn We don't burn them. Yeah. Well, we don't have any intentions on burning the token either. I don't I understand how this could be interesting for out of different types of projects, but we're not taking that direction. Yeah, so he's asking then, I think he's followed that up with the value of the Porter token. Yeah, what are we gonna do about the value? Well, we're gonna increase um, the value of the project and then hence increase the value of the token. That's all we're, so we're gonna keep delivering, we're gonna keep developing, we keep building, and then eventually the project will get there. But I know we've had some questions in the chat as well, where it's like, yeah, how are we going to pump the price and stuff? That's not our goal. Our goal is to build a proper solution that people can use. And we believe that the price would eventually reflect that. So, yeah, All right. reflect the value we've added. All right. Um, Victor is asking, how easy is it to build and run a node on Porter? Ah, it's pretty simple right now. <laughs> uh, you can probably set up a node in depending on which tutorial you follow, because we have our own tutorial and our documentation, but we also have some that are set up by some community members, primarily um, shout out to Node Guru. Uh, probably set up 30 minutes if you have everything that you need and you have a, you'll be running a node in Porter. Uh, Dennis is asking if you can comment a little about Porter Station Exchange. Ah, uh, did we? Oh, we've already put that out there. <laughs> yes, so um, we're gonna be working on a Porter Station, ex what we call Porter Station Exchange um, in a sense of once we have our tokens, we, we want to create once again, that the best possible experience for Porter. So we want to create the wallet and then integrate the exchange directly into our wallet as well. So people will just be able to, if you create a token, you built a project, you'll be able to swap that out using Porter, similar to the way you would do with Uniswap or um, PancakeSwap or SushiSwap or any of these platforms. So that's what we, that's what Porter Station Exchange is going to be on the Porter network, of course. Uh, Habib is asking the maximum supply. I think you've mentioned uh, you're still... If you mean a max supply of Kayan, that's 100 million right now. The max supply of Porta is yet to be determined. Pedro is saying he'd really be interested in that academy, so you better set that. <laughs> <laughs> that. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. We'll get that. We'll get that for you. <laughs> yeah, Emmanuel, if Emmanuel is in the chat, he'll definitely be telling you that, like, yeah, we're working on that. We, he has a whole set. If you have no idea how many things Emmanuel wants to touch on. I think he's he has he's more he's thinking so much about the people that want to get into the space. So yeah, we we have stuff. We're building stuff on, around that for you guys. All right, great. Uh, yeah, it, it looks like that's just about it. But I'm being reminded that we were to have three winners. Uh, you're giving away 150. Yes. Um, how do do I am I just supposed to pick from the from the chat? maybe you can pick from all or you can pick the question that you loved the most and and we can sort of award the one who 
definitely so the two people that definitely stood out to me with that question was um i i don't know if ben is a developer but ben your question stood out to me on um, crypto development and so on so i would say ben and victor as well so a lot of questions come through from you some good ones i like their question around the nfts for sure um because we it's something that we're thinking about so we really want to get that involved and i have to find a third person right yes let's have a, a lady let's have a lady at least yeah lady. yeah so um ladies I, they um, haven't asked a lot of questions today but at least uh, definitely definitely i'm happy to do that so um who who will be the ladies in the chat right now so we have ben victor and then tell me who the ladies are because some people i'm not sure if they're using their real names oh habib is a lady so habib is a lady the... then go ahead let's give it to habib a lot of questions <laughs> came through from habib yeah yeah all right all right great yeah yeah so we'll we'll be giving away at least 150 kian to those three people so thanks to go. porter as well for for yeah for that giveaway and i think uh as we close shane maybe we always like to you know ask our guests to sort of give uh, that sage advice that they've learned <laughs> uh, being in the space you, you know maybe talking to people who are just getting onboarded or maybe entrepreneurs in the space what kind of advice would you give yes definitely so hmm, what would be the thing that stands out to me the most when you're just getting into the space don't buy the hype right do your research um on different projects because once what ends up happening when you just go in based on you end up losing so if you're an invest if, on the investor side if you're just buying something because someone else told you, you should buy it that's not the best way to go about that if you you should invest in products that you believe in projects that you believe in and they will pay off over time do your research or do your research around that so i always say look into it. if you're interested in it look into it and then you can buy into it that's on the financial side yeah definitely if you if you want to build something just jump into it now is the best time to get involved great and i think with that uh, i think we can end the session thank you so much shane for just taking the time we would definitely love to have you back maybe once the nft marketplace launches and and other developments come through yeah we would definitely love to have you back but again thank you for being with us today yeah, that's great. Definitely. I would love to be back. Thank you for having me, David. Thank you to the whole team and thank you to the whole Bit, um, Bit KE community as well for being here and for having that chat with me.